Hey everybody, it's social media producer Tom Barnes from the WGN Morning News. The Chicago scene back in Joliet. Earlier this summer I was here because the Blues Brothers were playing right in the old prison yard. They uh, asked you to bring some blankets, you sit down and you watch the Blues Brothers. Now it's a whole different vibe because I'm at the old prison, check that out, and uh, I'm pretty much here by myself. And uh, they give tours and they kind of throw in a little haunting, um, some haunting stories because it's Halloween time. And what better way to celebrate Halloween at a socially distant tour of the old Joliet prison. So there's the prison. I'm gonna go in and meet a couple of my friends and we're gonna get a tour and hear about some of the uh, creepy things that have happened here over the years. Um, so that should be a fun Chicago scene. So uh, sit back and enjoy when we're gonna go in. All right. All right, so I made my way inside the old Julia prison with Jessamine and Liz. How are you guys doing? We are fabulous. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me, although that might be weird to hear by going back to old Juliet prison, but either way, thank you. Um, so this place is historic on many levels, right? And people are coming out here now to see it um, for haunted tours, regular tours. Why don't you talk about that real quick? Yeah, so this is actually the old Joliet prison. So we are out here. We are out here seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And this prison was actually made in 1858. It was built literally by the inmates, the second state penitentiary in the state of Illinois. And it was picked specifically because there was a natural limestone quarry right across the street from where we stand now. And those inmates who were out here in 1858 were quite literally taking that limestone and putting the limestone in their blood, sweat, and tears into building the walls that we're going to enclose around them. Literally building their own prison, literally which sounds just Shawshanky, but that's yeah. the, uh, so the prison was open that whole entire time closed in 2002 um, in late 2017 uh, the city of Joliet and the Joliet Area Historical Museum got access to the site um, we started doing tours in 20 late of 2018 um, last year was our first full season we do regular general history tours which covers that 160 170 years worth overview we do guard tours we do haunted history tours which is what we're gonna do tonight which is we're just doing a little earlier because it's so we can see. Yeah. yeah. The Haunted History Tours, we do it at night or at dusk, and we just talk about some of the darker stories that happened out here, the mental anguish and torment that the inmates and the men and women who lived and worked here, because we also had people who lived here who weren't inmates, um, what happened to them throughout the history. Because one of our guards always said that we don't need to make up ghost stories because the stuff that happened here was scary enough. I mean, this place predates the Civil War. Yes. Yes. Women were here back in the day. It was women and children. Like this place has all sorts of stories that might terrify people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so what are the places we're gonna see on this tour real quick? So we're gonna show you the chapel, mm -hmm. the east cell block, the hospital, and North Seg, which is also a solitary confinement. Which I also, above it has something, right? Yes. What's the big, what's solitary confinement yeah. is actually death row that was out there um, up until 1949 when the uh, electric chair actually moved to our sister prison over there. All right. Well, I'm ready whenever you guys are. You lead the way. And, let's go. All right. Let's go. All right. So if you're creeped out, you should be. We're in the old chapel. Right, Jessamine? Yes. So this is the chapel at the old Joliet prison. Mm -hmm. We've removed the pews for historical preservation purposes. Sure. But out here, you'd think that it's the most sacred reserved place but it's actually where we found the most shivs and shanks on site which is people let their guard down in here and yep you so found you stuff here after it was closed you found oh, yeah. shivs and, and shanks there was literally in one of the pews there was a dug out area where they would hide their shiv or shanks behind wow. me here yeah what's going on here we've got the confessionals and if you think about it this was a maximum security prison so you can only imagine what would have been confessed in those and there were regular, what, like Catholic priests in here, yeah, all sorts have, of kinds? All religions would have been able to be in here, except for, according to our research, voodoo. But all other religions would have been sanctioned. As far as they know, here. right? Well, I'm going to walk in here just so I can get the whole, here's, I know it's a little dark. Um, yeah, that's all sorts of creepy. Huh. So obviously that's where the priest would be. Yeah. And the prisoner, because the priest would have that cushy chair. The yeah, prisoner. There for a while. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and what? Then we have the altar up here yeah, as let's well. Take a look. Yeah. And behind that is all the sound equipment and stuff. But up here we have our altar. There used to be an organ too. Where was the organ? In this, this little corner. this little pit here, and then this is the altar. Um, okay. What's back there? That's. You said this is where all the sound equipment was back yeah. there? Yes. 
I'm just gonna peek my head in there. I know I'm, I'm not gonna walk back there. I just wanna. Oh yeah, it's all sorts of creepy. So we're working on preserving it. One of the things about this is obviously you can see that parts of the roof are well, the inside the insulation is falling. Mm -hmm. um, we have got it structurally tested, but the this roof used to be immaculate when we got out here and then it was struck by lightning a few months afterwards. Oh, really? Yes, the chapel was struck by lightning. <laughs> At the old Juliet prison? At the old Juliet prison. Yeah. Well, if that doesn't tell you what you need to know, I don't know what will. Maybe God doesn't want it here, but we're here anyway, nonetheless, yeah. right? Uh, anything else you could tell me about this space? That's the main area. Obviously, it's a lot creepier at night, too. So it's plenty creepy enough during the day. Right, and the only reason why we're here is not because I'm not scared or are scared or anything. It's just so we can see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so where are we heading to next, then? We're going to be headed to the east cell block. Okay. All right, so we're walking to the east cell block. Liz, what are you doing? You're opening this thing up? We're opening up. This is actually a brand new addition onto our tours this year. And we are officially able to bring guests into our east cell block. So no, this is this never was able to be before, huh? This is brand new, so this is a whole new experience for all of our guests. Okay. In well, the month of October, specifically. Okay. There we go. Not worried at all. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Things get stuck. Okay. So what can you tell me? So we are entering into our east cell block. This mm -hmm. would have been where inmates were coming. It was more of like the rotating door type cells. Okay. So inmates would have come here to either await their final destination, whether that was a cell in our west cell block, or they would have come here in preparation of them being transferred oh, to another is... prison. All sorts of creepy and cool. Let's look up there. So, this, so when you guys do this tour at night, what, is it just flashlights? It is just flashlights, um, their phones as well. Um, a lot of people actually bring in different devices that they have, either whether that be like looking for something or just curious to find it as well. But for the most part, it is just flashlight lit and phone. So lit. people can bring devices to find things if they're looking for something. Absolutely. Okay. So this was a holding area to go to somewhere else in the prison? For the most part. Some okay. inmates would spend a few months here. It was just oh. waiting for that final like spot for them to find a spot for you over in West or if you were to be transferred elsewhere. Okay. The conditions don't, I mean, it's a prison. It was, <laughs> they're not air conditioned, they're barely heated, yes, right? They, we had no air conditioning here on property. However, the limestone and the natural stone that they did use mm -hmm. would hold a lot of that like colder air, making winters out here very oh, interesting. How there, there was heat out here. Mm -hmm. um, when you're relying on it to be great right, right. for every single person out here. And this is kind of where this part ends, right? Yes, so we do have this cut off right now as we continue restoration efforts. Okay. Anything ever happen in here that uh, is worth telling? Spooky wise, <laughs> uh, maybe. It depends on who you speak to. However, mm -hmm. we do have some people out here who during our 1800s, all the inmates were actually building the walls around them. So they were actually manufacturing, putting the limestone into these buildings as they built the walls around them. Really? And as they were doing this, they were grabbing the limestone from across the street in a natural limestone quarry, mm -hmm. and they would bring it over here to the property. Really? We had one specific inmate by the name of George Chase. Mm -hmm. And George Chase actually had been quarrying over there. He took a piece of limestone and was able to hide it, conceal it somehow, and when he brought it back, he brought it into his cell. And as he did that, the warden was doing his daily checks and he came by to George Chase's cell. And when he did that, George Chase, he opened up the door and George Chase actually bashed him in the head, killing him on the spot. Holy cow. And as he did that, George Chase was immediately found guilty because sure. there was witnesses. And he was actually the first Will County hanging as well. So he was the first hanging in all of Will County. But well, congratulations to him. doesn't end there. <laughs> No? They actually, they end up burying his body over in our prison cemetery, which is about a thousand yards northeast of our prison. I had no idea there was a prison cemetery. A lot of people don't. Wow. That's really fun fact. Double but creepy. When they buried his body, they actually mm -hmm. took his brain, they took his head, so he is a headless corpse over there. Why did they do that? They had the study of phrenology at the time, which was kind of this pseudoscience. That interprets the bumps on your head and so stuff like that? So it's looking at the brain, trying to figure out if there was something wrong or something that indicated that they would become like an inmate mm -hmm. or a prisoner or just something that they would do and so they actually took his brain on a tour throughout all the u.s and like just carried it with them like just to show off this inmate's brain to like try and convince people that there was something involved 
However, this was later chose to be like proven wrong, mm -hmm. but his brain it was never returned back to his body. Okay, that's interesting and terrifying. <laughs> um, so that's all the fun you can get in the oh, E sub cell block. That's where we are. E cell block, which is very much the way it was when they left it. Where are we heading next? You know, we're going to be heading to the hospital. Oh, all right, let's go to the hospital. All right, Jessamine. So. Um, from what I've read and heard, this old hospital here at the prison is one of the most active spots in the whole place. I can't confirm or deny that, <laughs> but a lot of our guests would very much agree with you. Yeah, um, and if you're a fan of a particular show on Netflix called Mindhunters and Richard Speck. Yes, so Richard Speck was actually here on site. Mm -hmm. um, he bounced back and forth between here and Stateville, but obviously he's connected to this hospital. Um, when he died in 1991, um, his, Which is pretty recent in terms of history. Recent. Yeah, his body when um, went unclaimed. Uh, his, really, his next of kin didn't want his grave either memorialized or desecrated, um, and she just didn't want that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So the prison system actually took his remains I'm and cremated you in, but... them, and they spread them in an undisclosed location in Joliet. Really, we haven't been able to find out where that location is. So. They didn't want to tell anybody. They didn't want to tell anybody. So it could For be. For one reason or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in so, Joliet. So this is note, usually closed. The hospital. <laughs> so this is the hospital. This is what served the prison for the duration for the most. Yeah. So 1895 uh, till 2002. Let me peek in here real quick yeah. just because I want to see. What the first floor here would have been for quick things like clinical emergencies, picking up pills, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Second floor would have been isolation. So you'd have think about this, this was open during when tuberculosis ran rampant, the Spanish influenza. Um, there were a lot of outbreaks here just because of the living conditions and the cramped living conditions and the lack of understanding how diseases spread. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, over 60% of the deaths that took place out here was because of tuberculosis. Wow. Um, and that would have been on that second floor where they would have tried to isolate and quarantine people. Um, third floor would have been the psychiatric ward. Gotcha. And in later years, fourth floor was for drug counseling and stuff like that. And yes, I know it's dark in here, everybody, but there's no lights. Um, and this is the daytime. This is as good as we can get it right now. Yes. Um, and this is basically, you guys stay on the first floor for the majority yeah. of the tours, right? And there's plenty to see on the first floor too. Yeah, right? where do you recommend going? Um, so there's not, not a lot of light in any of these rooms. Okay. Um, just because of lack of windows. This room, actually, I had to bring a flashlight on me. You know what, hold on. All right, so we found some light. Because this is a room that doesn't have anything. Yep. What the hell am I looking at? So this would have been an examination room, as you can tell with the lights that are hanging down there with our caution tapes. We don't want hits their head. Which, obviously, if you've seen at a regular hospital, not too creepy. An abandoned hospital that's been open since the late 1800s in a maximum security prison. That's been abandoned for a couple of years. It's a little creepier. Yeah, definitely a little creepier. Yeah. Just imagine how many people have been in here is kind of the oh, thing yeah. that's terrifying. What's that room back there that's all dark? I have no idea. <laughs> it's okay, you can say you don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to peek. Nope. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're next. All right, we're going to go to the x-ray room. All right, I'm going to follow you because I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to shine my flashlight in your face. No, that's fine. Um, so we go down to the x-ray room. That well, one it. is, um, well, if you've ever shot and seen the show Ghost Adventures, sure. this is one of the rooms where they had um, sure. proven activity. Oh, wow. Here we go. So this is after, you know, possibly after a fight or coming in hurt or anything else. Swallowing something, yeah. Swallowing something. Because it's, I mean, you had inmates out here who were life sentences. Mm -hmm. They would have lived, they could have easily lived their whole, the rest of their lives out here. So you could have had fights, stuff like that. You also could have had mundane, like this is, Richard Speck died of a heart attack. Oh, right. Like people who've lived out their lives. And this is where they would hide when they would take the pictures. Mm -hmm. There's a little thing right there. Okay, yeah, definitely creepy. As you said, this is how dark it is during the day. So at night. Yeah. Even more so. Yeah, and just look at that. And this is kind of basically what it was when you found it. You guys. Yeah, believe it or not, we cleaned it up a little bit. Yeah, no, I, re I realized <laughs> that to make it so people can do what we're doing. But yeah. I mean, the paint peeling, this is a lot yeah. uh, what Cook County Hospital looked like when they were um, just getting into that. Mm-hmm. And the funds raised and stuff are going to be able to help us stop the decay. Right. And here's just another little peek at a room. Okay. Where are we going to next? We are going to head to 
North segregation or solitary confinement. Okay. All right, so we made it across, where are we, in the middle of the uh, prison? We're, yeah, we're for the most part in the middle of our prison here. And this is the original cell, but not just pictures. We actually, we actually have the real thing. So yes. you were telling me, this is, a, this is what it looked like up until the 50s? Yes, so they did not actually do a full transformation. They had to do a full remodel to get plumbing into the prison in the 1950s. So no plumbing up through World War II? Yes. So they actually would have had a slot bucket that they would have had as well as a water bucket in these cells that would have been your water for waste. And you said that maybe three people at yes. a time could have been? So originally this cell was built for oh, just gosh. one person. We had 900 of these on site. Oh, yeah, However, amazing. they did end up having almost 2,000 people out here. Wow. And when they had those 2,000, due to overcrowding, they would have put two to three people in here. Gotcha. That third person would have then used those two buckets and a plank of wood as their bed. Wow. And this is right outside of what? Where are we heading into this now? This is right outside our North Segregation Building. So this was one of also the 1858 building here on site, one of the very first here. Inside of this building, inmates would have come through and they would have housed like the inmates who were like causing trouble. This would have been a punishment area. Okay, How so like confinement, but not solitary? Solitary confinement. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, so this was not a pleasant place at this all. This was not a pleasant place. This would used to make even the most toughest of inmates break down and just it broke souls because of how just detrimental it would be in here. It was just so isolating. Um, and I'm guessing, so I'm going to walk in here. Is that okay? Of course. So you don't close the door. No. Nope. All right. So you got, maybe you get some light in here. There we go. A little light. So there's not much. There's not much. They would have had a bed in here as well as a toilet, and they would have spent 23 hours a day in this room. And while it is a large room... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised at how big it is. It is a large room. You're in here completely alone for 23 hours, mm -hmm. and they're taking away food and water. What's that? When they did a remodel, they turned this room into more of like an office oh, Okay, I got you. I was like, <laughs> So Whoop. we do have some of the actual cells that they would have looked similar to. Yeah, so there's and the toilet. So the only thing that you can hear is the other inmates in here with you. Yes, sometimes just screaming. Oh, God, this is like hell on earth. If you look in here. Yeah, what is, is happening in here? There is actually, this is a recreation electric chair, not the original one that was out here. But at one point in 1928, we did get an electric chair out here on site. And this electric chair would have looked similar to this one right here. But the electric would have been in solitary confinement. It would not have been. It would have been in a building actually connected to this one. Mm -hmm. And they would have um, executed the inmates in that building with the electric chair. Wow. So this room, I imagine, it's just got story after story. Story after story. You can actually Famous see. criminals have sure spent lots of time in here. You are not kidding. There are, this is one of the original bars that was actually out here in 1858. This is what the cell door used to look like. They would close it latch it into the wall and then if you look off over here mm -hmm. they would have closed this gray door on top of that oh so that's so what it looked like a... oh alone, so it's yeah unable to see the people even across from you you're just hearing them just hearing them and then there's just one little light up there for yes. light of day and even on like a bright day if you look even over this side depending on where the sun yeah. is you have almost no light up. no light i'm sure it was freezing cold yeah, or just exactly. miserably hot exactly no so airflow. No, no airflow, really. We're very lucky right now with the weather, but it would have been, it can get hot in this building. But however, with the limestone, the natural stone does keep it cooler. But it's the winters that would be just so bone chillingly cold. Wow. Even with the heat that was being pumped in here, which is these massive rooms, heat rises and you're yep. on the bottom. So in solitary confinement at Old Joliet Prison, huh? Yeah, this that? is what one of the cells would have almost looked like. You've got the bed in there with the actual mattress that would have been made here on site, as well as what would have been your toilet and your sink. Wow. This would be terrifying just to come in here at night yes. now in 2020. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because it's creepy I can get right now. One cool part about this building is if you are a Blues Brothers fan, yeah. the Never Too Late to Mend is also here. Look at but that. This would have been the last thing that inmates would have seen on their way out to the electric chair as well. Oh, really? Thinking about that. Like, never too late to mend either with the people that you wronged or with whoever their god was. So this is like you're on your way. Whoop, easy there. This, this is, whoop, hold on, my camera's going nuts. That's weird. Okay, let's try that again. So this is the thing that they would see as on their way out. Walking out of this door to the electric chair. This door here? Yes. 
and they would go out to electric. Yeah, the electric chair building is no longer there. It's actually open. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, it looks like it's yeah, chained. That's it's fine. It is chained. Okay. The electric chair would have stood just outside those doors. And and this is what you've seen in the movie. Okay. All right, that's creepy enough for me. <laughs> All right, so we made it back outside in the middle of the yard, and that right there, ladies, is death row, right? That is in fact death row. Yes. Okay. Well, this has been a educational and I mean, if you're really into history and hauntings and just stories, this is phenomenal. So thank you very much, both of you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Absolute so, pleasure. Uh, for people who want information about this and how to take it, I mean, it's not just now. You guys do tours all the time, right? Yes. So, so we yeah. are out here from March to October. Uh, we do close our season about October 31st just for weather. We're able to close up those buildings and we're able to just preserve as much as we can throughout that icy winter. And it just is, gets really icy out here on property as well. So we're okay. able to stay kind of put ourselves in some heat for a little while yeah. as well. And then uh, we open back up about mid-March. Awesome. You can book what, uh, tours. We have all different kinds of tours, but you can book tours on our website, joliapmuseum.org. Goes through all the different ones. Um, obviously in October, we do haunted history tours every night, mm -hmm. but throughout the season, we do them um, every Friday as well. Okay, and one weird question, because somebody asked me this before, can people have weddings here? As of this year, they can, yes. Okay, <laughs> well, there you have that. Uh, you can do the weddings, uh, you can get tours and everything else. Thank you ladies very much for the tour, I appreciate it. If you like something on the uh, Chicago scene, that's T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com. That's Tom Barnes at WGNTV.com. Thank you ladies. And uh, I'm just gonna go and take a little stroll before I get out of here because I love it. <laughs>